Hello, I am Jonathan Leonard and this is the first of my videos on emotions. If we are to explore how emotions work within the brain, we need first to define emotions. A brief definition, and a good one, is that emotions are really feelings. They include the classic emotions of happiness, sadness, anger, fear, disgust, and surprise. To these we can add shades of these emotions like elation and distaste, as well as other feelings such as guilt, embarrassment, and pride. And we can lengthen the list further by including basic biologic urges like sexual longing, hunger, and thirst. We can also see situations where nothing is present that would qualify as an emotion by any of these standards, but where we have feelings such as calmness or tension that leave us in a state that is certainly not neutral. These feelings have something in common, because they arise not from the brain alone, but from the brain and body working together. That's not to deny the existence of vast differences, differences in the participating brain centers, neural pathways, and brain and body chemistries, given rise to different feelings, and also to differences in the nature strength and complexity of those feelings. There are also certain exceptions to bodily involvement in which the brain appears to use its own circuits to generate some feeling without seeking input from the body. Nevertheless, in nearly all cases, the body plays an important role. In essence, the process appears to work as follows. Information registering in the brain can prompt brain responses that result in various brain and body changes. On the body side, some of these are muscular tension or relaxation, blood vessel constriction or dilation, a rising or falling heart rate, sweat gland activity, and changes in the mix of hormones in the blood. On the brain side, they include changing levels of neuromodulators and other chemical regulators that help to determine the brain's level and style of activity. The status of the body, as well as the status of the brain itself, is closely monitored by the brain, and when a particular cluster of changes happens, it is interpreted by the brain as signaling the presence of some specific emotion. As a result, you feel afraid, or happy, or sad, or whatever the particular emotion is. It's perfectly true that the type of regulation applied can vary depending on whether one is awake or in some particular sleep stage. In REM sleep, for instance, there appears to be little regulation of body temperature which can fall fast, and this stage is also noted for hosting erections and heart rate surges. Despite such developments, or perhaps because of them, REM dreams do not lack for emotion. But rather than turning to REM dreams, which are the subject of a later video, it's worth taking a more general look right now at how emotions arise within the waking state. Let's take a primitive example. Suppose you have a well-established dread of snakes. One day while you're weeding your garden, you suddenly spy a large black snake a foot away from your hand. At this point, the visual information about the snake that has entered your brain is relayed from the thalamus and early visual processing areas to your brain's fear coordinator, a small hardwired structure just beyond the end of the hippocampus that is called the amygdala. The amygdala, like the hippocampus, receives information from many brain areas, and it is well prepared to rouse both brain and body. When it matches the incoming snake information to its own snake memories or snake memory connections, it goes into action. By way of the brain stem and spinal cord, it sends signals out to the body, both to the voluntary muscles, including those of the face and limbs, and to the viscera. It tells the hypothalamus to have norepinephrine and other chemicals released into the bloodstream. And it prepares the brain for action by directing release of a neuromodulator, acetylcholine, that tends to excite the brain and also by sending out neural alarm signals to various brain areas. As a result, within moments of seeing the snake, you are seized by the well-known fight-or-flight response. Your body is prepared to act, 
Your full attention is riveted upon the serpent. Then, after you have bashed the snake, or have stayed very still until it has moved away, or have retreated to a comfortable distance, you will sense your pounding heart, sweatiness, and other body and brain states that go with the fight-or-flight response, and you will recognize that you have felt fear. That's fine so far as it goes, but the mix of emotions we live with every day is just that, a mix. Most of the time we are not overwhelmed by some basic urge like fear, hunger, or thirst. Instead, most of the dreaming and waking emotions that we feel are complex because they arise from personal or other events that are quite involved, events that would logically seem to demand more than simple pre-programmed action to express their meaning. How these nuanced emotions arise is the subject of our next video.